Welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Hi, it's me, Creative Katie, Karen Virgil. Today we have an art journal tutorial, step-by-step -step process video, telling you all the inside tips and tricks. If you want to support my channel, you can sh shop through my Amazon influencer links, or you can click on the PayPal link. Both of these are in the description box below. Want to support my channel another way? Hit the subscribe button. Share this video with your creative friends. So today we have a art journal tutorial and it's entitled Life is a Circle. And I'll be following the five step process in the video. I'm using my mixed media Canson and this is seven by 10 and I love this size and it's great for beginners. You can see some of the projects that I've done in here and you can go back in my playlist and see most of those tutorials if something catches your eye. So to start off with, I always tape off the coils to keep the gunk from getting caught up in the coils. And before I put the, the painter's tape on there, I touch it to my sweater or my jeans and stick it down. And that just takes away some of the stick. As always, I give a coat of gesso. Now I don't use the brand name gesso. This is economy gesso that I got at art supply stores. And it works for my purposes as the under, um, you know, going underneath all the surface. And you saw me slip a uh, plastic cutting mat underneath to keep it. I dry it by going on both sides as a bit of a tip. If you go on just one side, it may curl. If you get to the other side, A, it'll dry faster, and B, it may prevent some of that curling. So I, in one of my last Build Your Stash videos, I created some sentiment pages. And I'll put a link to that video. And I'm determined to use this one. These have I think there's three quotes that all kind of talk about circles and I'm just ripping the quotes apart and I'm going to collage this onto the page. This is going to be the background. Now some of these quotes are more bold, some are bigger, some are smaller, they're different fonts and that is all intended to add interest to my background. This has been Put on to tissue paper or deli paper. I honestly don't know which, I'm, but it does go pretty translucent when I glue it down with gel medium. So I'm just ripping some of them apart and you know when you're using collage materials you can actually place things in certain places if you know where you're going to go with the composition or not. And I have an idea, but um, it's kind of an idea in progress. Alternatively, I could have put all the quotes, the whole page down and had it cover the whole background. I'm just playing with it and seeing where I want to go. In the end, I end up turning it and going this way. And I have quotes here and there. And I know that I'm going to be putting some circles on this page. Hence the quotes about circles and life is a circle is the main one. That's going to be my font. So I'm using four colors here. I have two shades of purple, a lighter and a darker, and two shades of light blue. Again, a lighter and a darker. A couple of them are more opaque and I'm just putting them on with my finger, adding a little water, just mainly to get it to spread a little easier. I do want most of the sentiment to sh come through. So sometimes if I think I've got it a little too covered, I'm taking a baby wipe and just kind of wiping this off. Now this video I've sped up to two times the speed. In all, it was just under an hour that it took me to do this page. And typically it takes me longer if I'm doing something different, like using the collage sentiment paper. Now 
But I think it's important for you as the watcher to know how long it actually took. Because I know when I started out and I was watching videos, it really skewed my mind because people were getting it done. And then I was being, I was getting very frustrated because I couldn't get it done in that same amount of time. So I'm just mixing the colors, blending, and, and you know this about me. I love blending these colors on the page. It adds a lot of interest. You get some third or fourth color combos. But if you prefer using a brush, you can apply it with a brush as well. I just find that with a brush, I tend to get it a little too blended and I lose all that distinct colors. So of late I've been using a lot in the orange and coral tones and so today I just came back to my favorite purples and blues. So I'm only going to be using things with circles. So I went through my stencils and I went through my stamps and I'm getting circles and quite normally You've seen me do this. I'm using the same stencil, but using different colors. So I stenciled it with the light blue. Now I'm stenciling with the dark purple and so forth. And if you're finding your backgrounds are getting too busy, try limiting how many stencils you use. You'll be surprised at the effect. So here we had the collage. Step two is using the stencils. And with that, you're adding visual texture as well as pattern. And that all builds interest. So you can start seeing the layers that we have in this picture. Now, no matter what colors I use, I tend to add white and black and or gold to it, some kind of metallic. Didn't really like that, so I'm wiping it off quickly. And because everything underneath is acrylic and it's permanent, I can remove it. I'll put a link to this stamp. It's a Stampenda stamp, and I've actually I've cut it in half, um, but it's circles. And because I've used acrylic paint, it's added some texture as well. And because there's kind of a little thicker paint there, I'm taking time to dry it here. So I have the focal point and I'm just tracing the circles. Now I have these cutouts of circles here and I was using that to see where I want, how I want to set up the composition. I'm very visual and I have to have to do that. I can't just take the circle template and start drawing circles. I just feel more comfortable being able to addition everything. So this template, I will put a link to one that I found that's similar. I have used this oh so much. And if you don't have this template, you can get lids from containers and you, a variety of sizes and keep them at the handy and you can use it as a tracer. I end up coming back and adding a one in the corner at the very end because it just seemed to be missing. So I trace them with my Stabilo All Pencil, but if I activate that as it is by itself, it will be non-permanent. So I am using the float technique with a Prussian blue acrylic paint, and I'm going around the outside of these circles. And this is just going to basically make these circles pop off the page, look a little bit more 3D, step, up, step away from the background. 
almost like there are circles that are sitting on top of the background instead of just being part of the background. Now I admit at this stage, I was contemplating painting out the circles, painting them purple or the light blue, um, even the darker blue. And because of how, of it, how it turned out, I nixed that plan. So using this shading process, the um, floating acrylic is a it's a longer process. It takes time. But if you have um, just the blue Stabilo or a blue watercolor pencil or ink tents, um, you can do it with that and it may it will go quicker. But this is the step that while it takes time, it also really makes a difference to the finished product. So I don't want you to feel that something's wrong because it's taking you a long time to do it. You kind of have to go and then add, add more as you go. And now I'm doing it on the inside as well. Sometimes I do just the outside, sometimes I do just the inside. It varies. Basically, I keep going until I get the effect that is pleasing to my eye. I could have used black here as well. But I thought the black was going to be a little too stark. So when I'm not sure, I start with the lighter color and then I could always go over it with black if it's not, doesn't have enough strength. Just adds interest. So I'm taking the Prussian blue on a makeup sponge and I'm just edging to frame my page. You could do this with an ink pad and a makeup sponge as well. I think I go back and I actually do the float technique around just to get a little bit more because I have to do it at the top across where the um, tape is. So in the eye cards or in that you see in the top right hand corner or at the end cards, I will suggest videos and I select videos that you that are somehow related, either gives more information on a technique or videos that might use circles or use the same products or be or is on the same theme. As always, like sp special products that I use, I will put the links to my Amazon store. Thank you so much for, you know, shopping through, going through my Amazon store door and shopping. I do get a small commission. I just wanted to let you know that you don't have to, anything you buy in Amazon, once you walk through the door, I will get a commission on. I It doesn't have to be stuff that I link. It doesn't even have to be craft supplies. So I'm quite happy with the result here. And I actually stop long enough to take pictures of the background before I add more. Now these, this is a sheet that I put modeling paste through, a stencil on the sheet and I'm just punching out a circle in it and it's kind of got that spiral look. So while it's still related to my circle theme, the shapes 
work together. I'm thinking also this will make it an additional texture and because I'm collaging on top. Now I'm, I painted some of the circles, the purple and the light blue and the dark blue because I wasn't sure what color I want it to go with. And I, and I honestly don't think there was a mistake here. And I cut out the sentiment, life is a circle, the end of one journey is the beginning of the next. I love that quote. And I'm gonna put those on to kind of the backdrop for, I'm putting them on the circle, the circle becomes a backdrop, sorry. So now I just want to paint this texture, textured circles, and I'm using the blue or the purple. I decided to go with the purple. I thought it would be a little too busy if I went with more than one color. Now I'm using my angle brush for this and you sh I shouldn't because I, I like to keep my angle brush nice and clean and keep the edge and the point to doing my shading. So using it on rough texture is probably not the best idea. So in a recent video, you in my build, build your stash, organize your stash video, I talked about using my Lindy sprays and I moved them out of the cupboard and close. So this is sweet violet purple teal and it has the teal in it and it has the purple and I discover that okay the spray isn't, isn't working so I'm just dripping it on there but if I spray it with water first it gets it to flow and I love using these Lindy sprays when I have texture when I've used modeling paste it just gets caught in the nooks and the crannies and in a minute I'll show you the teal how that does get caught in there and it just gives a lovely effect now the thing you have to watch for is the Lindy sprays are not permanent so I will not be able to glue on top of this and I will not be able to put any wet medium on top of this without reactivating it and changing what I have there so I have to remember that from now on but it doesn't mean I'm not going to use this wonderful product. It just means you have to take precautions later on. And as I dry it, you can see, you can see that shimmer. I love these Lindy Starbursts. They are, oh. So now I just want to edge them. I want to give some, define the, the edges of these and I'm just going around with the Prussian Blue and my makeup sponge. Now because I've added the purple, it made this purple a little darker than what I was originally going with, but that's okay. The shimmer and shine just makes up for that. And you can see the collage sentiment paper behind. I absolutely love that. I'm, I'm so totally going to be doing that more often. And, and I encourage you to go check out the video and give it a try if you can. Now before I glue those down, I decide I need some more shimmer on here. So I grab my silver and my fan brush and I'm wetting down the silver and I'm going to splatter with it and get even more circles. So you can see all the different layers and every layer adds interest. So because the Lindy's is on top and I don't want to reactivate it, I will not be putting gel medium on top. 
and I'm careful not to get any on there. So that's why you see me taking it off to the side and putting it on there. So that's what I mean about taking precautions when you use a medium that is going to reactivate. So any watercolor, neocolors, gelatos, all of those, a lot of sprays will do that. Now I'm just doing the final positioning of the words. This font that I used here, the bigger font is, boop, beyond the mountain, sorry. And I just semi-fussy cut. And the white that's in there goes well with the white that's in the background. And again, I'm not, I'm being careful not to get gel medium on where I've sprayed the Lindy spray. If I wanted to seal this page or varnish it, I would spray it with a fixative, a spray varnish, and before I would varnish it. But mostly if it's in my journal and I'm not displaying it, I don't varnish it at all. Many of the spray varnishes are have a have a have a chemical scent to them that really bothers me and gives me migraines. The low odor Krylons does make a difference. If you were wondering, that really does make a difference. It doesn't give me migraines. So now I'm just kind of shading around these pieces just to make them blend more with the background they have, they're in. Circles are a great thing to use and it would go with any sentiment. Um, it's a great design feature. And so if, as a beginner, you know, and you're worried about focal points, try using circles. It, I'm always happy every time I use circles. So now I decide that I want to do the float technique with white on the inside, just to enhance the 3D effect. Kind of like adding some highlights. I'm thinking of doing a video on the float technique, set up some practice um, activities for you that you can do with me because it is such a wonderful technique. And once you've mastered it, it, it just, the usability is, is so there. So if you're interested, you know, leave me a comment. Another way you can support my channel is share my videos with your crafty friends, uh, like them, leave comments. YouTube pays attention to that kind of stuff. And so the more comments, the more likes that I get, the more they recommend my video. I comment back to everybody that leaves a comment. The circle stencil that I used, um, there was a Donna Downey stencil, I believe. So I will make sure I put a link to that because it's a great stencil. I've used it lots. It's a good basic one.
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, circles are a great way to start off. It requires very little drawing ability and they're always very effective whether they help develop the background or whether you use them in the focal point as I did here as well. Pick a color scheme. Give this a try. Get your circle on. Now are some close-ups of the finished product and the finished backgrounds. Thank you so much. Leave a comment below. Give me a like. Share this with your creative friends. And as always, have a very creative day.